Hey YouTube, Shigun Shinobi here with my first Stockpile Sunday review where I take a look at older toys I never really got a chance to review when they came out. So our first Stockpile Sunday consists of Shinken Yellow, Shinken Pink, and Princess Shinken Red from Samurai Sentai Shinkenger, or Power Ranger Samurai if you're one of them. So, uh, yeah, these were all exclusives of some sort. Shinken Yellow and Shinken Pink were Tamashi Web exclusives. Princess Shinken Red was a Ion Shop exclusive. Um, Princess Shinken Red was released over here as a New York Comic Con 2012 exclusive, so that was another way of getting her. Um, yeah, these all share the same exact mold, just with different heads and different accessories, so I decided just to throw them all in one review and kill three birds with one stone. So let's go ahead and take a quick look. I'm going to be using Princess Shinken Red as the base here just because I really like the color red. So the female Shinkenger body is an interesting one. It's a lot like the Gokaiger one, which I did get a chance to take a look at. Just with the obvious Shinkenger bits in it. Uh, particularly the shoulders here are very wonky. The color differences are pretty much not even visible on pink. Kind of visible on yellow and still kind of glaring on red. These shoulder bits here are a lot darker than the main red. Which isn't that huge of a deal, but it's just something that you notice. Because color differences work like that. And the, the shoulder joints are one of the worst figure art shoulder joints to ever exist in the lifetime of figure arts. Uh, it's got this weird cutout here at the the shoulder with this round shoulder piece acting as the front, but it's kind of closed in the back. I mean, it works. It, it works well. Uh, and I think this is kind of what led eventually to the Ichigo uh, shoulder system, which I love to death. So I'm thankful for it. It just looks awful. Particularly on the girl figures where everything's just kind of thinner, it just kind of looks bad. But shoulders aside, everything else is pretty much perfect. I can't complain about anything else. So you get the ball jointed um, ankles down there. Obviously double joint there. Full rotation there. You got a slight uh, swivel right there at the thigh. And then the skirt gets all effed up. Shinken Maru does come off. We'll just set that aside for now. A double joint there, typical wrist joint, and like I just went over with all the shoulders, and obviously 360 movement all over on the head and the neck. So a pretty nice mold overall. The Gokai Girls did it better, but considering these all predate the Gokai Girls, it's kind of understandable. And there hasn't been any Sentai Girls released since then. Though uh, Kamen Rider Natashiko, which we'll be taking a look at pretty soon on Stockpile Sunday, um did the whole female thing very well so we'll take a look at her but overall not bad figures um, in particular so this is just a female body with the shink and red helmet slapped on it we'll also take off shink and pinks shink and mara just because it is long pointy and gets in the way very light pink on her um, co contrasted to the sentai hero series toys which use this bright neon pink a very subdued, calm pink, much like the suit, so I really do enjoy that. And of course the head sculpt is actually very good. And it's much noticeable, the fact that it was pretty much made for this uh, female mold. Very nice overall. Neck is kind of long, I think that's just a common Shinkenger trait. With these figures, the necks are just always really long. Sentai kind of gets the short end of the stick in that aspect. Uh, here is yellow, again, a more subdued, calm yellow color, um, much like the Gokai yellow color that they used. Um, helmet sculpt right here. Yellow is probably my least favorite helmet for Shinkenger. I just don't like the way that Kanji ends up looking on her. It just looks really strange. Um, but, yeah, very good overall as well. Same articulation bit, so I'm not going to go over that. There is a little black nick right there on her chest and it didn't happen on my end because I literally just took her out of the box even though she's been sitting in my house for like a year and a half but that's fine uh, so yeah this isn't like my fault or anything it came right out of the box with that little 
to paint Nick on there, but it's not that huge of a deal. He's going to be carrying the Lance Slicer anyway, and that thing's huge. We'll cover it up. So, um, accessory-wise, uh, they actually come with a fair amount of accessories. Here is Shinken Yellow and Shinken Pink's hands. Uh, as you can see, each of them come with additional skirt pieces, just like the Gokai Girls, to make a more um, articulated skirt section. Go uh, Gokai. Shinken Yellow comes with the Saru Origami in the uh, little monkey mode and the emblem mode, as well as a Shotophone and brush mode, the Lance Slicer, obviously the Shinken Maru, and two, four, six, eight, and nine additional hands, while Shinken Pink comes with the Heaven Fan or Sky Fan if you want to do that, Earth Slicer if you want to be one of them, uh, the Shin um, Shotophone in brush mode, the Kame Origami in emblem mode and turtle mode, the additional skirt pieces, and two, four, six, eight, ten additional hands, plus the Shinken Mara, obviously. So female Shinken Red comes with the Rekka Dizanto in the sword mode. A little bit of a disappointment. I would have loved to see them mold a cannon mode for that since we never got one. But it's just a repackage of that. The Shotophone and brush mode, the additional skirt pieces, doesn't come with that. And two, four, six, eight additional hands. Plus the Shingen Mario. So you get a pretty decent amount of accessories for these. All of the weapons look absolutely great. Here is the land slicer. No movable pieces or anything. Though the handle does rotate. So you can get the pose that you want with it. Got the kanji right there and the blades. It does have a nice point to it. You have the Shiba logo right there. Uh, lots you can do with this. Uh, she can hold it by the blade. She can hold it back here. To kind of create a shield like thing. So there's multiple different things you can do with that. And uh, the disc would be removable if you could get to it. I think you can pull this handle bit off. There we go. And take the disc off if you wanted to do that. So that is removable. The Heaven Fan also with the removable disc. Bam. So you got the disc right there. Uh, very nice details. It is a little bit pliable. I wouldn't uh, push it too far. It will snap. But it does have a little bit of give to it. Shiba logo, very beautiful painting on that with the kanji right there. So pretty nice as well. And while it's not new, the Rekka Dizanto remains a very cool weapon. Uh, like I said, I would love to see this in the canon mode. It's a really unfortunate that we didn't get that in any of the figure releases. The disc is removable, I swear. It comes off, you can trust me. <laughs> um, but again, very cool, and it is hollowed out inside to uh, make sure it's not that heavy and the figure can support its weight. To uh, alternate the cape pieces, again, I'm just going to use red because it just works that way because red's a nice color. I like red. Red's nice. So we'll just open up uh, <laughs> Shinken Red here, take off these skirt pieces right here, just kind of plop them to the side, front and the back, and replace it with these, like, weird underwear-looking ones. I always thought these were very strange. I don't like these pieces, to be honest with you. Um, I appreciate what they're for, and that they give the figure added articulation, but it ends up looking very off to me, and I hate that aspect of it. Um, plus, this bit of getting the little pins in is very difficult to do. So then you put the additional little pieces on under here, which I should have did first, but I'm backwards and silly. So those are on a little ball joint, and they plug right in. It's very easy to do. Unlike uh, some of these softer ball joint uh pieces like particularly on the common rider scarves end up being very meticulous in how they attach so you just pop it right in there you go let's make sure we got it on this side nope but without going any further with this as you can see it does free up a lot of articulation space you can do like almost splits which has tendencies of doing stuff like that so you want to be a little bit careful with it, but like I said, it, it's a nice little added bonus on these figures. If you are 
very into articulation, then it's probably something that seems very helpful to you. But if you're looking for a more accurate looking figure to the show, then obviously one with like underwear bits and very odd uh, cuts in the legs obviously really isn't going to do too much for you. So it's really down to personal preference. I enjoy the just the normal skirts because accuracy is key for me. So overall these really aren't that bad of figures. For the first female Sentai attempt, they did a very good job outside of the shoulder issue, but that plagued the male Shinkenders too, so that's nothing I can hold against the female mold. Um, everything else is done very well. The proportions are, in my opinion, accurate. Outside of the slightly elongated necks, I think, um, everything else looks absolutely fantastic, in my opinion. Um, the weapons in particular look absolutely great. The little origamis are adorable as normal. Uh, so everything is just really... Ends up looking really good with these, uh, these gals. So, uh, in terms of difficulty to find, Princess Shinken Red is very easy to find between the New York Comic Con release here in the States and the Japanese release. Um, she got as low as about 3,000 yen or so, so that really wasn't too expensive for her. Mako and Kotoha, on the other hand, a little bit more pricey. You're probably going to find about 4500 to anywhere between 4500 and 6000 for these, um, depending on when they pop up on Mandarak or Yahoo Japan auctions. The female Sentai figures just seem to sell a lot more than the male ones do, and they become a little bit rarer in the secondary market. So if you see these guys for a good price, or gals rather, I would definitely, definitely pick them up uh, to complete your set. Shinkender is one of the easy sets to complete um, outside of the Gokaijers, um, which aren't really that difficult, or really isn't that easy to complete considering the price of Gokai Yellow and Gokai Pink. It's good to see that uh, Yellow and Pink for Shinkender were a little bit easier to get a hold of and aren't as expensive on the secondary market. So if you're a fan of Shinkender or a fan of Power Rangers Samurai, then I do definitely re recommend picking these up. They're not that pricey, so uh, getting a complete team really isn't that difficult. Plus, they do look really great. I'm actually kind of impressed by the poses I did manage to get, considering I usually suck at poses. But uh, very cool overall, and these are three absolutely great figures to add to your uh, Sentai figure arts collection. They are really early releases, so um, they get a little bit benefit of the doubt. But they're still great figures overall. So you can check out ShogunShinobi.com for all these updates on my reviews and hauls. And of course, check out Riders, Rangers, and Rambles, the podcast bringing the latest token news in the craziest way possible. And of course, you can buy SH Figure Arts and more Super Sentai merchandise at CSToysJapan.com. So take care and have a great one. Bye.